Hey guys, it's Elon from Inside Fighting and we're back. And this time I'm going to address the number one thing I hear from critics of hand trapping, that it just doesn't work. You can't pull it off in combat sports. Well, here we have Vasil Lomachenko, one of my favorite fighters. We're going to deep dive. We're going to look at how he makes it work. And there's one trick, by the way, that I'm going to give away in this video that I think changes everything. So stay tuned. Pow, pow. Inside, inside fighting. Yeah. Dangerous, dangerous martial arts. Hey guys, before we get started, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below for the algorithm. And uh, if you have a chance, go to InsideFightingStore.com, maybe when this video is done. I got lots of cool stuff on there, some really good instructionals, really good ones for self-defense. And if you get it, you watch it, and you don't like it, I will refund you. So that's my promise. That's how much I believe in those videos. That's my pitch, as always. And we're going to jump into Lomachenko. So what's the number one thing people say? Jeet Kune Do doesn't work. Panatukan, which is Filipino fighting and boxing, doesn't work. They say Wing Chun doesn't work. And they say it doesn't work because trapping doesn't work. That's the primary argument. You cannot pull off trapping in the ring. It's too hard. Now, there's obviously a perfect example. Vasil Lomachenko, one of the best boxers, in my opinion, of all time. Very slick. We're going to look at some of his movement. There's some great videos that people have already done over here. Let me just present so here we go. This is a great video. I'm going to put the full length videos in the description below so you can watch those if you want to see them. But we're going to look at some trapping that he does and why it works. This is his most basic form of trapping. So right over here, as you can see, he's going to parry down the lead hand and they'll replay it in slow motion so everyone can catch it. He parries down the rear, the lead hand of his opponent. Okay, sinks his hips so that he can get below it. And then he comes over top and just drops the lead hand with all his body weight and then throws over top. This is like one of the first things you learn in Filipino boxing, Panatukan, dirty boxing. It's also one of the first things you learn in Jeet Kune Do. It's also one of the first things, principle-wise, you'll learn in Wing Chun, clearing that lead hand to come in. But for some reason, it's one of the most criticized things in the world. I'm going to explain why so many people have a problem with this and why Vasil can pull it off. There's one little trick that he does. Now, notice he is always actively moving forward when he traps his opponent. He doesn't trap moving back. It's an important note, and I'll explain why. Because he's taking the space away from his opponent before his opponent can strike him. And this is the big secret, ladies and gentlemen. Vesel Lemachenko does not trap reactively. What do I mean by this? He doesn't wait for you to punch him and press him and then react to it and then trap your hand down and come over top. He pressures you. He moves forward, you raise your guard, and then he actively traps you. He traps you from a position of you defending, as you can see there again. So there are two key important notes here. One is trapping doesn't work when you are moving back. It's much harder. And two, trapping doesn't work when you are highly reactive. It's much harder because your nervous system is firing like crazy when you are reactive. It's why under high stress, we never perform as well as we do when we're the attacker. When you are active, you can pull off a lot more. That's exactly what we see here. He traps actively. See, he's waiting for his opportunity right there. He did not wait for the person to hit him. He stepped in, trapped their hand down, and then punched them in the face. This is called active trapping. It's something boxers don't do enough of, and it's something that's extremely, extremely effective. It's also the mistake that a lot of Wing Chun guys fall into, Jeet Kune Do guys, and Filipino martial artists fall into, which is what they get into is highly reactive trapping. They say, go ahead, punch me. I'm going to show you how I can trap. No, I want to trap you when you are guarding up because I'm pressuring you. And that's where the secret of trapping is. Let's just come back to me a little bit here. So uh, trapping is often misunderstood in that sense. And Vasil Lemachenko, even here, I'll put on another video of him, explains it himself, by the way. He's not hiding it. He openly explains it this way. I'll take away the, uh, the volume just because he's not speaking in English. But he's even explaining you have to be guarded up. I clear the hand down and I hook over top. This is a little bit different than the technique we saw before. Now he's cross guarding. He's cross trapping you and pulling the hand down. He's peeling. This is hand trapping. Again, this is something you would see in other martial arts. One of the, the things that has pissed me off about combat sports as of late is that there is such an ego in the styles that people practice. In other words, if they're boxing, nothing else works. Nothing else is worth training. 
If you're doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, nothing else works. Nothing else is worth training. MMA is the ultimate peak. And if, if you don't do something that works in the ring, then you're, you know, your style is useless. Well, here's an example. People disregard these techniques like crazy. And they act like when Vasily Lomachenko does it, it's something revolutionary. When really it's been around in other martial arts forever. It's just not applied in the way that people thought it should be. And here's a perfect, I do this all the time. I loop off the hook, off the jab, and I come inside. I've shown this in numerous videos of mine. Um, and it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Again, the secret is active trapping, not reactive trapping, and forward pressure. Because when the person you are fighting becomes reactive, their hands get tighter. They don't react as quick, as odd as that sounds. And that's when they guard up. And that's when trapping works, to clear the guard. It is intended to clear the pathway to you hitting the person. It's not intended to start reacting and then hope that you can open something up and then catch the person. So here, Basil is just explaining it really simply here. And it's a simple concept. You guard up. You peel it down, you trap, and you hit. Bam. He frames, by the way, which is a very, very common thing you see in Wing Chun. Framing is a huge part of his game. And I'll show one more video about that after also. These are things you should be analyzing if you're into martial arts or combat sports. Because it is important to see it applied in the ring, especially with big gloves on. Because one of the biggest hindrance of trapping is gloves it makes it very hard to have tactile sensitivity right there bam it doesn't even matter if he pulls it down it just matters that he gets you focused on it and notice always him attacking he does not try and trap you when he's defensive this is heavily used in jeet kundo and wing chun framing off the head to control the opponent's movement now this is the one time you will see lomachenko and this is how he traps people who are coming at him this is more reactive trapping he doesn't go for the hand. He goes for the head. He traps your head. Now, this is really important as a note. Why does he trap the head? Because the head is attached to the body. And when someone is coming at you aggressively, it's much harder to find their hands. It's much easier to find their head. Their head presents itself. Their neck, their body presents itself. So when you are trying to reactively trap, here's the next lesson. You have to trap with the head the head becomes the reference point no longer the hand the head and why like i said when i'm moving back what's the thing that's coming at me fast your entire body your hands are swinging i'm not going to see them but when your head is visibly in front of me that's something i can place and frame against so you switch when you're active you attack the hands when you're reactive you attack the body which is the neck and the head and that's how you trap so I want to show you guys this old fight when uh, when people used to talk like this. See, you were good, kid. Real good. If someone can tell me where that accent, accent came from and where it went to, I'm highly, highly curious because it's the most fascinating thing to me. But here it shows how small adjustments, like having smaller gloves or not fighting with gloves at all, allowing clinching much more, allowing wrestling, changes a style tremendously. Now we can laugh at these old school boxers. The style has evolved tremendously but it's become more sport and less fight and you'll see that they actually do play with each other's hands a lot more than you would expect they end up in these trapping positions that you just don't see in modern day boxing where they're kind of hand on hand touching each other and then looping over top exactly what lomachenko was doing by the way hand play finding the opening now if you look the reason for this and this fight shows it is because you will not see the ref break it up in the clinch the same way as we do in modern day fighting. They're allowed to fight, grab arms, clinch up. They're even allowed to frame on each other's necks, like clinch like a Muay Thai clinch in a lot of these fights, which is super, super fascinating. It's really good to watch these old fights to understand where techniques evolved from. Look at that, those people, all dead nowadays. They're all dead. It's like 100 years, 110 years ago. Kind of sad. Anyway, weird thing to think about. Bottom line is that, you know, we can look at these, these old style fighters and just laugh at it, say their guard is low, their footwork is off. The arts evolved so tremendously that there's nothing here. But I trained with a European boxer who showed me this guard, showed me this guard right here, kind of the way they're fighting. Low to the body, high elbow. And 
you can find the video on my channel. It's actually quite amazing. What he does is he clears, he traps with this hand and come over top of the right. I could never see the right. This was protecting his body. He was using this as kind of a weapon. And then it would go bam and catch me. Really hard to see. And uh, actually, it's something I use all the time now when I'm sparring. So there's stuff you steal from these old boxers and trapping was part of it because they had smaller gloves and the rules weren't developed yet. And you notice that people got tied up with their hands and had slick, slick techniques to clear the hands. Something that's been lost by and large in modern day boxing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it brings an awareness that there should be an appreciation for some of these other styles, even if it's just cross training or watching some videos or just gaining an understanding of trapping. Uh, and that trapping can be used in combat sports when used properly. Like and subscribe. Like I said, really appreciate it. Leave a comment below for the algorithm. Thanks.